the greatest enemy of all time, especially in spiritual warfare, is you. Because when you boil it all down, when you look at every battle that you've ever faced spiritually, if you really peel back your emotions and the layers, you look at yourself and you say, hey, in the end, when it was all said and done, it's really me. It's really the fact that I just handed the battle over to the enemy. And it's not that I, I lost because he was stronger or bigger or better. It's because I gave in to weakness and I folded and I fell and I failed. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. But put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Now the wiles, very quickly again, are strategies and tactics and schemes. He says in verse 12, For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand or withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. Yeah. And verse 18 says, Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit. Perseverance and supplication for all the saints. Every battle lost is another battle given. Again, as I said earlier, when you lose a battle, and, and what are we talking about? We're talking about missing the mark. When you're aiming towards righteousness and you miss it, you just, you're just you off the grid. You don't even hit the target because you missed it. You blew it. You fell short. You sinned against God. Have you ever found yourself saying or somebody you know saying, man, I've just been dealing with this thing. I, I've dealt with these things over and over, and I just can't make it past it. Don't feed yourself with all that because it's a lie from the enemy. You can overcome it because his word says you can overcome it. Don't give in to it and don't believe it for one stinking second. That the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Well, the enemy every day, he prepares a plan of execution against each one of us. And his goal is that he would make you miss the mark. And when you miss the mark, it is sin. So every day his goal is to get you to sin. So what's sin? We say it like this. It's a really easy way to remember. Anything you say with your mouth, you think in your mind, or you physically do that displeases God, that is sin. So every day the enemy's job, his goal is to cause me to sin, to cause you to sin. So how does he do it? Well, we call it this. We call it temptation. He's been studying each one of us since the moment we entered this world. He's been watching us. He's been wondering what it is that we're weak. What area are you weak in? And so he watches you and he tempts you. And it's kind of like fishing. You know, we live on the lake. Lots of people like to fish. You go out there and you do what? You put bait on a line and you dangle it out in front of the stupid fish, right? If some kind of bait doesn't work, what do you do? Try another one. You reel it in. And you try something different. Yep. And then all of a sudden you figure it out and you say, the white bass are biting on blank. I have no idea what it is. Or I don't hurt if like you're it. like me, you try Worms, a lot of different <laughs> baits and nothing works. We can't get <laughs> they never bite. anything. <laughs> but you know what they're biting on. Well, the enemy does the same thing. He dangles things out in front of you. And he watches to see, are you going to take that bait? Are you going to give in to that temptation? And so what we want you to understand today is that when you give in to that temptation, there's a cycle of things that begin to happen in your life. When you give in to sin, there's a cycle that begins to happen that opens the door to the enemy working in your life. And you may say, what is the big deal? Right. Who cares if I lose a battle or two? Who really, what's the, what's the big deal? We're going to tell you what the big deal is. The first big deal in this is that when you sin, it opens portals for the enemy. What's a portal? Well, I want you to think about it as a portal being a doorway. Well, I want you to know that there's certain things that we do that will open the door of the most dangerous enemy to come in and attack your family. Sin does that. I want to tell you a really short story about how different things that begin to happen in our life, we open those doors. One of the things that will open a portal is when you fight with your spouse. Now, you may say to yourself, we don't fight, we just have discussions. Well, that's awesome. We have passionate It all is in the, right? in the way that it's going down. You can have a discussion, but oftentimes if your, um, if your voice begins to get louder. And it involves throwing things. And <laughs> 
That definitely, if it involves throwing things, your heart begins to beat, but you begin to have these passionate discussions. Well, one night, Brad and I were having an extremely passionate discussion. We would call it a fight. <laughs> and, and I was right. <laughs> oh, yes, because that's probably part of it right, always, exactly. right? Right, exactly. So we're having this discussion. Our kids are in bed, and we were like cutthroat. Now, we had made a pact a long time ago when we got married that the D word was the worst word you could say, and we would never use it in our home. You say, what's the D word? You're thinking of every cuss word you know. Okay, it's divorce. Divorce would not be uttered in our home. So when there is a fight, even though the enemy's trying to destroy our home and our family, we would never say we're getting a divorce. So that night, we were so ticked off. We were both getting tired, and honestly, some people say just stay up and fight. We gave in. We just couldn't do it anymore. <laughs> so we just went to bed mad. And so we're laying there ticked off mad. Obviously, we've given in to the enemy. We have opened our door wide open, and we don't want to admit it. As pastors, when we fight, we fight with Scripture. So we're like quoting Scriptures at each other, pointing out one another's sin. We're laying in bed, and it's about 2 o'clock in the morning, and neither one of us are really sleeping. We're just laying there mad. And we begin to feel in our home just this evil presence. And it's like the Bible says that pride is the reason that the enemy, Satan, was cast out of heaven. And pride is what causes us to not just say, Father, forgive me. Pride is what causes us to not go to your spouse and say, hey, I'm sorry. And so we have both had so much pride. We're laying there, and all of a sudden we heard this crash in our living room. But both of us knew what demonic activity was. Both of us knew what it was to have evil presence in your home. We knew what we had done, and at that moment, we knew we had demonic spirits in our home, and we had allowed it. And we both looked at each other, and we jumped up because our children were all sleeping on the other side of the house. And the worst thing you can do is because of your own actions, your kids are affected. And so we jump up, and we run into the other room, and we had this ginormous, like, huge mirror that was probably three foot by three foot that hung on the wall. It hung on the wall with one of those hooks that it, the, the hook was like this. I'm not very good. It's a hanger. And it's a hanger. It's a hanger. I'm not an interior decorator, but it was a hanger. Mm -hmm. And so it hung on those hooks. And so there was no way that it just like fell. When we went in, this mirror was crashed onto the floor. It was broken all over the place. The hangers were still in place. So it literally had been lifted up and thrown down. And what it landed on when that happened was our family picture. We had a family picture that sat underneath um, on a table, and it literally had just shattered that picture. And Brad and I both looked at each other, and we immediately said, I'm sorry. What have we done? We have. We know better. We've allowed the enemy to come in. We went and got oil. And there's nothing mystical about oil, but the Bible says that oil was used to anoint the kings and the priests. And so oil represents the Holy Spirit. Presence and so of God. we went and got oil, olive oil, out of, our, out of our cabinets. We put it on our hands. We walked all over our home. We literally opened our doors, and we commanded that the spirits leave our house. We prayed over every part of that home. We gave each other a hug, and we said, this is it. This doesn't ever happen again in our home, because here's the deal. When you open up portals, sin doesn't just affect you. It affects everyone under your leadership. So our children were now affected because of what we had done. So what the enemy does is he will work on you and work on you and, and work on you in those areas where you are most weak. Now, how does he know? Because he's been studying you your entire life. He's been studying humanity for thousands of years. So when he knows what your weakness is, that's where he's going to work. He's not going to work on me with, with something that he knows I'm not tempted by. So he'll work on you and work on you until he knows that you're so weak it's not him pushing you over the edge. It's you giving up. Do you understand what I'm saying? And in that moment, when you miss the mark and you say, I just give up. I give in and I'm going to give in to this thought or to this, this uh, action or to my words. I'm going to say what I know that I shouldn't say. And when you give in and when that sin takes place, something shifts, something happens. I want to read to you a passage of scripture uh, very quickly. Um, I think we can pull it up on the screen. It's Galatians uh, 5 and 19. Let, let's just for a second take a, a pit stop and let's, let's look at what the Bible says sin is. Let's give some examples of what sin is, okay? It says, the works of the flesh are evident, which are adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lewdness, and the list goes on. We're going to read it from the, from the amplified version. 
which is really, really good. And it talks about idolatry, sorcery, enmity, strife, jealousy. Who, have, who would have ever thought that being jealous of somebody else is a sin? When you, when you have jealousy in your heart for somebody else, you've totally missed the mark and you've opened up a portal into your life for Satan to bring in and unleash a curse upon your life. God's presence flees and Satan enters and has and is able to, to, bring, to reign and to rule in that situation in your life. You've opened a door wide open. Sorcery, enmity, strife, jealousy, anger. Think about it when you, when you just absolutely completely lose it. The Bible says it's okay to be angry, but be angry and sin not. So you can be angry, but don't lose your temper and just fly off the handle and cause yourself to sin because of it. We look at divisions, and that's dissensions. Uh, a party spirit. I think that's kind of funny how they worded it, but, but think about it. Think about it. When you allow yourself, especially in high school and college, and you just allow yourself to be open wide, up, wide open to that party environment where you're just... You're just going nuts and just going plumb stupid, right? And you just lose yourself and do all kinds of ridiculous things at wild parties. The Bible says that is a sin to just lose total self-control uh, in, in such uh, environments. It says envy, drunkenness, carousing, and the like. Now, now I want to talk about drunkenness just for a second, and then I'm going to come back. Uh, but, you know, a lot of people, a lot of pastors don't touch on this because they're yellowback sissies, and, and I'm not. And so I'm just going to tell you how it is. If you want to know what the Word of God says, then come to Mountain Movers and listen to the truth. If you want to hear something else, then I guess listen to somebody else that's, that's not going to tell you the truth. But here's the truth. When you get drunk, it is a sin. Boy, we don't like that word sin because it's so offensive. I don't want to be offended, but the cross was offensive. Because Jesus was hanging on that, and it should have been me. Because of my stupid flesh and because of my sins. And so when we get drunk, why is that a sin? Because you open your mind wide open for all sorts of things to happen. You lose control of your mind. Think about it. How many of you guys, don't raise your hand, but how many of you guys have done really stupid stuff when you got drunk? Absolutely. Now you see my hand is raised because I've done really stupid stuff when I got drunk. And the same thing, I've never used drugs, but, but the same applies. When you use drugs, you, you're out of your head. You lose your mind. I knew this one guy, he was sitting at Taco Bell, and he started bawling his eyes out, right? He's tripping on acid. He's sitting here at Taco Bell, he's bawling his eyes out. Oh my gosh. Yeah. And he's got this scared look on his face. And he's like, what is wrong with you? He's like, that burrito just got up and walked off the table. <laughs> Seriously. Now, you tell me that you haven't lost your mind when you're tripping on acid? Yes! Are you in control anymore? Not when you see a burrito walk off the table, right? You're not in control anymore. So when you're not in control, who is? You're wide open. So the enemy can march himself right into your mind. God wants to have control of your mind. And when you open it up like that, the enemy gains control. That's why it's a sin. So don't get drunk, okay? And the Word of God continues and says, carousing and the like. And he says, I warn you beforehand, just as I did previously, that those who do, do such things do not inherit the kingdom of God. In short, you know what it means? It means that if you make a habit of these things and you continue over and over and over to lose battle after battle after battle, you miss the mark over and over and over, eventually you will lose the war and you will miss out on heaven being your home. Let that sink in. Why? Because I love you. And I don't want you to miss out on heaven. And the whole reason this church exists is so that we can help you understand how to hit the mark every single day of your life so that you can stand before God and one day he can say, well done, good and faithful servant. Does it mean that you're not going to mess up from time to time? No. I mess up from time to time. There, there's times still that I struggle and there's times when I might want to just choke the fire out of one of my children, especially Tyler, because he drives me up a wall crazy. That's because he is identical he's exactly to you. exactly like me, and I want to kill him literally with my hands. I want to kill you now. I said, call the police. 
have them come and get me. My son is going down. They just right? call mom. So they call mom, and she intervenes. She throws water on me, does whatever she has to do. I have to just cool off. But I get angry. I do. I get angry, and, and God's working on me, and I have gotten so much better. You should have seen how bad my temper was when we first got married. It was horrible, horrible. I, like, destroyed the whole house because of my temper. Stupid, stupid guy stuff. But I've gotten so much better, and as time has gone by, I've matured in the Lord. I've grown in the Lord. I've gotten better at hitting the mark rather than than missing the mark. So what happens when you sin? What happens when you, when you get angry, when you get into a fight with your spouse and you go to bed without making up? What happens when you're jealous because somebody has something you don't have? What, what happens when you get drunk? What happens when you're addicted to drugs? What happens when you allow sin into your life? You open up these portals. You open up this junk to where Satan now has a freeway, an avenue by which he can come in and he can bring torment. He can breed fear. He can, he can, literally, you're opening up for a curse to come into your life. And, and when you open up these portals, it's almost like all the rules are out the door and he can do just about whatever he wants. I want to give some examples of portals. When, when you watch a, a horror film, a, a movie that just, you, some, I know you guys, some of you love scary movies. I understand that, but I'm telling you that you are flirting with the enemy right. when you do that. When you, there's a reason. Think about it. If you'll just think clearly, when you're in your house and you are terrified and you watch that movie, it opens up all sorts of activity. Why can you not sleep at night when the movie's over? It's because you've opened the door in the spirit wide open and demons have literally flooded into your home. And they're, surrounded, they're surrounding your bed and you can't sleep because there's a tremendous spirit of fear all over you. Because you've opened the door wide open again and again and again. So uh, let me give some, some deeper examples. When, when you, uh, guys, hey, look at technology. Look at all these things, these portals. You know, when, when you're, uh, it's just a magazine, Success Magazine, has nothing to do with what I'm talking about, but it just represents, when, you know, when you're at the, because I don't, I don't have any bad magazines, but when you're at the grocery store, hey, how easy is it? Man, sex sells, right? You just look at the covers of those magazines, and, and most of the images are half-naked women, Right? And it's like, you know, I walked up the girl, I'm like, oh, hey, want to buy some gum? Oh, man, it's hot in here. Okay, let's throw this stuff on the conveyor belt. I, I have to distract myself from the imagery that's on those magazines. Now I have a choice in that moment. Either I can give in and look at it, or I can look away. I can make a choice to hit the mark. And we're, we're faced with opportunities all the time, but it is a portal. And there's many times that guys, that guys give in. Especially, on, look at technology online and, and, and how much access do we now have with smartphones? Just, just within a few little swipes and a click of the finger, I mean, you have access to anything you want. And I'll just tell you plainly, just like I was talking about with alcohol, pornography is a sin. Looking at someone with lustful thoughts that is naked is a sin. Having lustful thoughts with you with that person is a sin. And when you do that, I'm telling you right now that you are opening a window wide up for the enemy to flood into your life and do practically, just wreak havoc on your life. Here's really what happens. The, 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 the glory of God is lifted. It's in the Hebrew, it's called Ichabod. And you think about Ichabod Crane from Sleepy Hollow. His name means the glory of God has departed. When you let sin in, God's glory is lifted up. Why? When Jesus was hanging on the cross, Jesus said, Eli, Eli, sabachthani. That means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why have you turned your back on me? Why do I not feel your presence anymore? Because God cannot dwell where there is sin. And in that moment, Jesus had taken all your sins and my sin upon his shoulders on that cross. And when that happened, God had to turn his back on his one and only begotten son. Think about that. When we sin... We Ichabod, we allow the glory of God to depart from us because God cannot dwell inside of us or around us when we've invited sin in. Do you get it? So, so then how easy is it for Satan, you take the glory of God out of your life, for Satan to come storming in and wreak havoc on your life? And then you ask why you're not blessed. You're filled with fear. You're filled with anxiety. You're filled with hopelessness. You're filled with depression. It seems like everything go, that, that could go wrong goes wrong because of sin, because of a decision. When I was, when I was young, I was, I was living for God. I was trying so hard to live for God. And, 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 and 
it's, it's hard for, for young men, and as you get older, it, it does get easier. But I'm telling you, the lust of the flesh is so difficult. And, 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 and I, was, I was really learning how to be pure and to be holy. But I'll just be honest with you, uh, pornography was, was a problem for me. It was, it was an addiction. And I, got, I tried so hard. To, to, and that's when I memorized that scripture. No temptation has overtaken me, such as is common to man. But, but God is faithful. He'll not allow me to be tempted beyond what I can bear. But with every temptation, he provides a way of escape. And I had to constantly set myself up not to be alone at home. And I had to constantly, if I was with a, a, a woman, I had to make sure that I wasn't driving alone with her in a car. Because not only does it not look good, but it opened up the door for temptation. I was flirting with sin. I was flirting with the opportunity to miss the mark. And so, so in that time in my life, man, uh, I would do really good, and then, and then I would fall, and I would stumble, and I would fail. And, and in those moments, man, the powers of darkness would just flood into my home like crazy. It was awful. This battle went on for about a year, and at the same time, God was kind of calling me into ministry. So I was really struggling between my flesh and, and, and the spirit. And yes, God was training me. He was allowing these demonic activities to infiltrate my home and, and for me to experience these things. But at the same time, he was trying to teach me about the power of holiness. And then whenever I do give in to sin and temptation, that, that it un, unlocks that portal and that door and allows the enemy to come, come flooding in like he was doing. And, and so, man, my, my buddy and I, uh, his name was John, and, and, and we were best friends. He was the worship pastor at our church. And, man, we were just like brothers. We were best friends. He was discipling me. He was an awesome man of God. And um, the Lord had really just kind of been prompting my, my spirit. He had been speaking to me in prayer that there was going to be some, some things that were coming down the pike, and I needed to get ready. John and I had been fighting really bad. Like, I don't mean fist fighting, but I mean we had been saying things that were very hurtful. Our mouths were out of control. We were very angry at one another, and this was during the day. And he just went to, uh, he just went to go clean his room. He shut the door. He was vacuuming back there. I shut my door, and... And all of a sudden, you know, I hear cat toys, these little, you know, balls with bells in them, with the feathers, those stupid little cat toys, hitting my, hitting my door. And then change. Everybody has a junk door, right? Everything from inside that junk door was being flung against my, against my door. And it was hitting the door. And I opened the door, and all that stuff was laying on the floor, but there was a, a full-size piece of paper, a sheet of paper that was leaning up against my door, and it, and it laid on the floor. And I, and I picked it up and read it, and it was a handwritten note written by a demon that said something along the lines of, uh, you know, every time you guys fight, you just give us more and more power. See you tonight. And it was written real crooked and kind of like someone had taken the, their two fingers like they didn't have any muscles in their hand and they just wrote it real crooked and real weak all the way down to the... And John was still in his room. He, never, he was still vacuuming. He never came out. So things like that happened regularly and, and, and it caused me to understand that, man portals open up the door for the enemy to come into your life and to, and to reap destruction and havoc. Now, ultimately, ultimately, what happens when, when you lose battle after battle after battle after battle? Eventually, you'll lose the war. Eventually, you will lose the war altogether because the Bible says when sin is full grown, it brings forth death. And that doesn't mean just death in your physical body. It means death in the spirit. It means that, that heaven it is no longer a hope for you, but hell becomes your home forever. That's what spiritual death is, is that it means you go to hell forever, away from and out of the presence of Almighty God. The Bible says that we are to be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. When Brad was dealing with all the demonic activity in his home, yes, he was given into sin, and yes, God was training him, but at the same time, God had authority and was allowing it. And as pastors, we go into homes all the time. We get called all the time to go in and pray over somebody's home. Why? Because the power and presence of Almighty God is way more powerful than the enemy who was cast out of heaven himself. God is still in control. And so today I want you to know that you can be an overcomer. You do not have to give in to sin every single day. You do not have to give in to the power of the enemy. The Bible says in Ephesians 6 and 10, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. You see this picture, this image of a soldier kneeled down praying, and we've all seen it. And it's so cool, but I'm telling you, if you want to win the war, this is the pose that you need to take in your mental 
mind every single day. You see, when the enemy tempts you and you begin to say, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world, no temptation has overtaken me than such as common to man, but God is faithful and will provide me a way of escape, it's because you begin to pray. And it's because you begin to call out to Almighty God and you say, God, in my own flesh, I am too weak to do this. God, I'm going to give in. I don't want to give in and go back to the bottle. I don't want to go in and go back to the pills. I don't want to fight with my spouse. I don't want to fight with my kids. I don't want to let my mouth be out of control. I need you, God, to take control of my life. And as you begin to pray those prayers every single day, every single moment, you know, the Bible says that we're to pray without ceasing. And the reason Paul said that is because this is the post that wins the war every single day time every battle you face a battle is temptation okay put the two together every battle you face is the enemy tempting you to sin you win that battle through prayer you win that battle by realizing you are not strong enough but the God inside of you will help you be an overcomer I want to give you an opportunity this morning to come to know the Christ that I know the Savior Redeemer and friend that I know he has changed my life forever and I'll never be the same again what I want to do is I want to help you to understand that when you sin and you want God to to heal you from being that sinner if you want him to save you with his grace it takes admitting in your heart that you've fallen short and we all have the Bible says it there's days when I fall short and I have to get right back up and I have to ask God to please forgive me of my stupidity But you also have to believe that Jesus is the only way to get to heaven. It's only through God's Son that you can get to the Father, that you can make heaven your home. And you have to confess with your mouth that He is Lord. You have to dedicate from your mouth from this day forward that you're going to live for Him according to His Word, never to be the same again. If that's you today, I want you guys just to bow your heads with me, if you would please, and just close your eyes. And What I like to do is I just want to count to three and, and... on three if if you want what I'm talking about if you want to know that you know that you know that you know that you know that you've been made right with God and you want heaven as your home you want to win this war when I count to three I want you just to slip your hand up and I'm gonna pray with you right where you are we're gonna pray as a family today so here it goes life change on three one two three. Is that you this morning? I see your hand. I see your hand. Anybody else this morning? Quit digging. Quit digging that pit with that shovel. Anybody else this morning? You say, Pastor, I don't know if I'm going to make heaven. I want to make it right today. Anybody else? Thank you, Father. Well, I want to pray with those of you that raised your hand. You can put your hand down. Let's all just pray right now as a family. If you would repeat after me, Father, I love you. I thank you for your son, Jesus. I know that I've made mistakes. I've sinned. And I'm sorry. Please forgive me. I admit that my life can only be made right with you. I believe in my heart that Jesus is the son of God. I confess with my mouth that he is Lord. And I invite him to live in my heart right now I dedicate from this moment forward that I will live for you God I will live by your word I will become a person of prayer I'll become devoted to your house and I'll serve you all the days of my life if you prayed that prayer I want to tell you you are saved I want to tell you that the angels in heaven are rejoicing right now over each and every one of those souls that gave their life to Christ this morning. I want to tell you about an awesome series that we're going to start next week. Next week, we're going to launch a series called The Missing Link. There is something missing in our culture and in many homes across the world. And we're going to tell you what it is next week in a two-part series the missing link. So we got a couple ways that we can give. We've made it easy because everybody in this room probably has a smartphone. So if you've got it and you don't have a checkbook, that's okay. We've 
Got the text giving now. Just text 918-223-8090 and you can just text give. Throw in the amount there and just push in. Save your phone though because your kids will try to text for you and that'll be a bad deal. <laughs>